I have a question for you, actuaries. Does practice make perfect, or does practice make permanent? I have a confession to make. When I took this exam in June 2019, I only scored a 7. This is quite embarrassing, because I have been working as a predictive modeler for over a year at the time. I still remember the day that I walked into the predictive modeling meeting the day after sitting for exam PA. My manager said, how did the exam go? And I said, I wasn't sure that if I had passed or not. And then he said, well, it would look pretty bad if a predictive modeler didn't pass exam PA. <laughs> and it was true. Uh, I felt very anxious because I knew that I didn't get the best score possible. Now, there are some other reasons behind this. I was also taking exam STAM in the same week, and I, you, and I took that five days later. And so I was dividing up my study time between the two exams. You can learn from my mistakes. You can use a better study routine than I did. In this video, I'll explain what I did to study and how you can better prepare using this online course. If I could go back and retake this exam, this is the approach that I would use. Step one is to test your knowledge with practice exams. Step two is to review tutorial videos. This is the practice. When I took this exam back in December of 2019, I didn't have any study resources besides the SOA's modules. So my routine was as follows. I would download the SOA's projects. I would open up the sample template. Then I recommend that you set a timer on your computer for five hours and 15 minutes. This will help you to be sure that you're not running over time when you sit for the real exam so that you'll be focusing on speed and efficiency as well as just answering the questions correctly. You should also only use a single monitor because on Prometrics computer, you will only have a single monitor. You should also print out your project statement and hold it in front of you. Uh, this is again mimicking the uh, Prometric setting. In all sittings of exam PA, they have given you the printed project statement during the initial survey when you sit down at the uh, Prometric Center. Then you need to go through and uh, complete each of the tasks under the time limit. So I'm assuming that uh, you've probably done this already for some of the SOA's practice exams. Then uh, the next step is to grade your work. And so uh, you can take the, uh, the SOA's solution file and uh, you can compare it to uh, your own exam. And you can go through and uh, look for any differences. And uh, when you do this, I recommend that you print out your submission if you have a printer, or if not, it's fine if you just use a monitor, but have some way of adding uh, annotations to your report. So what I did is I went through and I uh, just marked anything that I saw that was different. Now, there are some disadvantages to this approach, and so I want to give you a warning. The first warning is that this isn't how the SOA grades. Uh, the SOA grades each question uh, based on a relative basis, meaning that they compare everyone's solutions together, and then they give the best solutions the best score, and they give the worst answers the worst score. They won't be comparing everyone to a single model solution. Rather, they will be comparing all the solutions together. So um, perhaps a more realistic method would be they would look at run number one, run number two, run number three. They would look at all of these answers side by side. Now these are all my practice runs, right? And you'll, you will have your own practice runs. But imagine that you know, each run was from a different person taking the exam. And the SOA, the graders will come through, like let's look at uh, task two for instance, and they will basically compare each of the people together and then give the best score to the best answers. And uh, so it's not possible for you to do this because you are only one person. And additionally, uh, when you repeat your own practice exam, you will automatically remember what the answer is supposed to be. So the first time you do a practice exam, you'll have the most accurate answers. But the subsequent times, you will already know the answer. So I suggest that you save the best practice exams for last. So don't go through the like the June exams until like the last like two weeks before December, or maybe, maybe two weeks or three weeks. Uh, but be sure that you've practiced on all of the other uh, projects, like the June 2019 exam, the hospital readmissions project, and gotten your simple mistakes out of the way. 
and then leave the latest exams so that uh, leading up to PA, you'll be able to know what topics you are weak on and focus. Just do quizzes, uh, go back to the modules and do examples, and uh, go through our online videos and drill through as many practice questions as you can. So let me show you how you do that. So when I graded this uh, report, it only took me a few minutes because I was just going through the video. So here's the hospital readmissions um, solution video. And I would just start at the beginning and then set the video to fast forward. Class two, examine the relationship between the class and competition. And then I can just um, read through my own report um, and listen to the commentary at the same time and then um, mark my grades. And so uh, like for task one, um, I got full credit. I avoid applying the transform to this uh, ER variable because it's a counting variable, but I did apply the transform to this length of stay variable. Yeah, so that one was fine. Uh, for task two, let's skip ahead over to task two. We're already working on task two. I noticed that I used, I failed to remove uh, the six observations. And so I made a comment on here that says I did not remove. So I would subtract four points from this question. Task three, just watch task three quickly. Analysis to consider a new system that's provided code to run a k-means cluster analysis on length of stay and age. If you elected to transform either of these variables, then use transform versions. The analysis sets and start equal to one. So, so, so right there, I saw that I made a mistake because it said use the transform versions. So I used length of stay and age. I did not use the log transformed versions. Um, so that means that my cluster centers would, would be different. So that would be um, minus five points. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at task four. Task four was searching for an interaction. Task four, select an interaction. Select one pair of features from among gender, race, ER, and HCC risk score that could be included as an interaction variable in your GLM. Do this by first proposing two variables that are likely to interact and then using one of your supply functions to graphically confirm the existence of an interaction. Continue until promising interaction has been identified. Include your selected interaction when constructing the GLM in the following tasks. So what is an interaction? So an interaction is when the value of, well, when the effect that a predictor has on the target changes depending on the value of another variable. So do you see the mistake that I made? So I, on task four, I just say, your assistant thought of including an interaction between race and gender. I did not see significant evidence against that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I never define what an interaction is. And so if a grader was comparing two people together and one person gave a nice, well-written definition and then the correct answer, and the other person didn't, I would certainly subtract points from the person who put less effort into answering the question. So when I'm grading my answer here, uh, I will subtract one point. There are a number of other benefits to using the solution videos. They give you a wider range of possible answers. Uh, you'll notice that for the latest exams, like um, let's look at the, uh, the June 2019 exam. I called this one the customer phone calls exam because that's what the, um, the task is to model customer phone calls. Um, so you can see in the initial introduction, it says, in many cases, there is a wide range of satisfactory approaches. This solution presents one such approach with commentary on some alternatives. So our video is going to detail on other alternatives with the emphasis on the ones that save you time and have the lowest risk of error. You can also just review um, our quizzes as well as our topics. So let's say that I've gone through and I've graded my exam and I found that I'm weak on uh, gamma distributions. I could just go to the course and search for the gamma distribution. And here I can find uh, some short answer practice exercises, or perhaps I'm looking for data exploration. I can find a few questions. I can see here that there are a number of questions in our discussion form. Here's uh, the hospital readmissions exam. Here's the, the traffic safety exam, which is also the June 2019 exam. Here's the customer phone calls one, right? And then I can just uh, go through and uh, find the topics that are relevant um, and review those topics. So this will save you time because you don't need to repeat the entire practice exam just to get the practice of the questions that you need. So I hope that this video was helpful and I hope that you have a wonderful time studying for exam PA and that you pass with flying colors in December.